Hello everybody and welcome back to the Detroit Tigers franchise episode number 21 here on the Boss King Returns YouTube channel. We are now um we are now the defending world champions. <laughs> uh, but a lot has changed already to start this off season. Um so two teams have already been sold. Two teams have been sold. Two teams have been founded. It's just a wild start to the offseason. So, so let's start off. The Nashville Sound have been... They're the first expansion team that that is can't come into existence. And they're not really all that impressive. Um, fairly uninterested owner. Average market. Not nothing special for for Nashville. Um, however, the other expansion team, the Portland Beavers, kind of has a wild story to them. Uh, you'll see why they have such an insane budget to begin with. They they're owned by a consortium of three uh, by a owner group of three people. Now it looked initially like the Portland Beavers were going to be a team known as the Vancouver Grizzlies. However, at the last moment. Jeff Bezos and a consortium including Derek Jeter and CC Sabathia came in to buy this team. Well, buy the expansion fee. Also, that is not where Jeff Bezos is from. Ignore that. And not where he was from. But, um... This team is expected to be very good off the bat. Jeter was named G GM... CC Sabathia was named manager, and they brought in a whole bunch of their former teammates to be the staff on this team. I would expect this team to be competitive within a few seasons, just given the name power and the insane budget that they're gonna have. This Portland should Portland's gonna be a force for years to come. Speaking of forces for years to come, the Chicago White Sox. Uh, where are they? Um. The Chicago White Sox have been sold to Michael Jordan, who decided that he is going to actually... A consortium of investors led by Michael Jordan, it's a similar situation to the L.A. Dodgers. So, what's probably going to happen is this team is going to be insane, and I'm pretty sure they extended Bizana because, let's see... $2 million, yeah. That's... 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 <laughs> Yes, yeah, so this team, the, the the White Sox are going to be fucking insane. Um, the former Mont Tampa Bay Rays were sold to a were sold to F one team owner of Aston Martin, overall team owner of Aston Martin, and Montreal businessman billionaire Lawrence Stroll, who has a very similar outlook to Bezos in the fact that he's going to spend all of the fucking money. And the rest of the league shall pay. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all of the major news. Like, there's been a couple rebrands. Uh, the Padres and Angels have new looks. But it, it, overall, it's it, it's been quite an exciting couple of days. And a lot of this happened during the World Series and all that. Um, but yeah, we have a fucking brand new look for the league coming into next season. Now, because of the expansion draft, the league has been... Okay, that's schedule. The league has been reorganized into four divisions. It's the same playoff format. There, there, there's Except instead of two wild... Two... Instead of three wild cards, there's four. Um, I did get that right. I, I, give me a second. I just need to make sure that I actually did set there to be four wild cards. Yes, there's four wild cards. Um, um, we have been moved to the Metro along with the Red Sox, Yankees, Mets, Expos, Phillies, Pirates, and Jays. Uh, there's the Midwestern Division. Don't ask why the Rockies are there. I don't fucking know. Same goes for the Southern Division. I have no fucking clue why I put the Reds in that division. I, I just leave it alone. And uh, the NL West is, well, basically what you'd expect. Um, 
Uh, so back back to our Detroit Tigers. Um, what, what what is the plan for the off season? Um, well, we've already dealt with all the salary arbitration. No real point in showing that, given how it usually goes. But I've already set my protection list for the expansion draft. Torkelson, Diaz, uh, Robert have been left off, mainly because I don't really care if I miss out on Edwin Diaz, because I'm going to trade him regardless. Um, I probably would rather trade him than have him get lost, than lose him to the expansion draft, but we will... Um, We'll, we'll, we'll move on to that in a bit. Um, but yes, basically, the, the guys we left off were guys we don't really care about to begin with, and like fr and like some fringe minor leaguers, guys we were about to lose to free agency. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what it is. <laughs> also, this, the expansion draft takes place after free agency. Okay. Um, and what else do we have? Okay, that's our budget. Where's the, uh... Okay, there's the dev lab. So here's our dev lab. Uh, Connor Phillips, we're just desperately trying to get that control up to 50. We are, we have given him a fairly sizable extension offer, but we'll we'll see that in a second. Chase Burns, um, I want to get his control up too. He's at this point I've just accepted that he's a insanely good reliever, but I still want to get the control up. Henry Malloy, who is going to be back in the lineup next year, taking over for Robert. I want to get his Babbitt up Babbitt up further because like there is a very good player in here somewhere. Also, I actually saw. <laughs> what Henry Malloy looks like for the first time today because the Yankees lost 4 nothing to the Tigers and I didn't realize he was black. <laughs> like, no offense there, but I, I didn't realize that. That name probably should have rec recognized it because that's a really weird spelling of Justin. <laughs> but it's probably not actually Justin. I, I don't know. Um, William Sullivan, we're going to work on the gap power. Once again, like, I'm going to move him to first this year. Let's see if he actually fucking plays well. Matt Scott, another guy just trying to work on his control. Um, Parker Meadows trying to work on his contact. Connor Bennett trying to work on his contact. And then these last three are guys who are just trying to, like, fucking work on. Mitch Voigt, just trying to see if, if there's anything here. Matt, uh, Peyton Toll trying to see if there's anything here. Um, Peyton Pohl, we're actually trying to bump his power? What? <laughs> Peyton Pohl. Yeah, we're gonna work on his fucking contact. I don't know what the hell I was thinking there. Um... And Shelver, we're trying to work on his control, because he's already a really good pitcher, but we're, we're, we're going to try and do that. Uh, I've also sent out an extension offer on Shelver. Uh, well, with that, with most of that done, we're going to like move forward a bit, but honest to God, I'm not even sure we're going to move a day, day before I, I do anything, because I'm going to try and look at deals to try and move on. Um... We're going to try and move on from Diaz, and maybe a few other highly highly played player, highly paid players on this team. Um, Austin Wells, I'm also cutting because I don't know. I I don't want to pay. I think he wants like three million, and I don't want to pay it. Um. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna head out real quick, and I'll see you when I have a. Uh, I'll, I'll see when we when the, when something interesting occurs. Okay, so just as I told you, we're still here on the first day of the off season, and I have the first deal. So we need to replace um, we need to replace Robert. So Evan Carter, 
He's been usually fairly well above average as a hitter, and probably league average on defense. Like, he's definitely a downgrade defensively. He's not particularly great. But, this fucking... He's a very good hitter. And you stick him into our lineup. Now, he is fragile, but I'm like, I'm not too worried about that. He has a four-year contract with some incentives. Um, looks like it's actually three more years through his age 30, 28 season. Um... But he's not a free agent for a while, which is really nice. Um, that And from the looks of it, the Rangers are willing to eat most of that for Austin Wells and Oliver Aguilar for a guy who I was already planning on trading. So <laughs> I'm basically all for this. Like I, I, I'm paying Evan Carter a million dollars next year. Um, this is going to massively f give us a bit more financial flexibility. And while having Diaz was great, I basically knew this was only going to be like a one or two year thing. So, goodbye Edwin, it was fun having you. And Austin. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, everybody like recently just signed their extensions and it appears that we have like quite a bit of money in the bank so I, I'm honest to God considering committing long term to Matt Scott for the plain and simple fact he he should be fantastic like I'm fully convinced that this year was just kind of a fluky season and even then he he was still above league average so this man is a Cy Young contender and our pitching in the in the over the next few years is going to get kind of thin, so committing like honestly, what what is this, a hundred million dollars for uh, a guy who should be a fucking superstar in the years to come? I'm more than willing to do this. Thirteen years, one hundred thirty-eight million dollars. Now you might say, oh, that's a lot of years. I don't really know. I get it, it's a lot of fucking years. But in the end, the money is more what I care about than the years. Like, I'm willing to pay somebody $10 million to be fucking shit 20, 10, 15 years from now. I want them to be nice, and I want them to be affordable through their prime. So, if I have to suck, out, suck it up and deal with some shitty years near the end, that's fine. Um, that should be the last time we talk until... Uh, free agency um i think the only one not to sign yet is shalver but he said he would sign his i think it was like a it was a fairly long-term extension um i'll see you at at salary that well i, I don't think we're, we're heading to free agency so we don't actually know who won reliever of the year and we don't know who won the nl silver sluggers but here, here's a look of here's a look at your Silver Sluggers for this season, Luis Robert Jr., uh, Colt Keith, Mas Masayuki Tanaka were our Silver Sluggers this year. Uh, there's a look at the NL. Gold Gloves, we had third base. Surprisingly not center or short. Oh, it's because it fucking... It, <laughs> Because we change, because we change the league structure, it's giving out fucking AL awards to people who didn't even play in this fucking league this year. Uh, Yoshi, Yoshi, we'll just we'll just call him Yoshi. He he got the AL Rookie of the Year. Lewis won the NL Rookie of the Year. Manage, AL Manager of the Year went to Pete Weber, first year manager, and our guy who led us to the World Series. The NL Manager went to Jason Borges. Of the Colorado of the Colorado Rockies, Cy Young in the AL, Justin Steele in the NL, Shane Boz, who I'm pretty sure this is like his second or third. Now it's just his first one, but he has put up some monster seasons in Colorado somehow. So I, good for him. 
And in terms of the of the um, MVPs, it's Aaron Judge for the American League and Drew Romo for the National League. Fucking hell. 398 padding over there. Drew Romo is just Joe Maurer, but even more fucking insane. <laughs> yeah, now we're moving on to free agency. Okay, so on the first day of free agency, Spencer Torkelson has filed for free agency and given us a qualifying offer on him. Let's see what this year's free agent class looks like. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that. Forget it, forget it, forget it. Um, I think you were able to see that. Matt Scott um, signed his extension. Um, I still haven't heard any news on Shelver, but I'm sure he will at some point this offseason. Um, but William Sullivan also did. Um, once these extensions get through, like I showed you fucking Smith Scott's because it was... A fairly major one, but given how small fucking Shalver's extension is, I'll, I'll just show you it once he once we once he resigns. Um, let's see. Off season center. Let's check out what this year's free agent class looks like. <sighs> you know, I I think this guy might have <laughs> actually be better than our guy. Oh, God. And he's younger, too. Eh, I'm not gonna... I, I'm gen, for a second there, I was genuinely considering, do I trade you, Masayuki, Masayuki and then fucking replace him with Kim? It is, it is kind of tempting, but I don't think I'm going to. I already... I, I, I'm gonna stick with the, with the player I already know. Um... Might end up regretting it, but who knows. <laughs> Tarek Scruble is a free agent this offseason, and he fucking sucks. He's, he's <laughs> He has a fucking... His, during his time in in Cincinnati, he had, a, he had below league average fucking run prevention. And, like, his, 20, his 2027 was good, but everything else was, like, either at or below league average, so I'm not I'm not jumping on bringing back our former ice. Gunnar Henderson's not, is an option, but probably not. Given we only have about 30 million to spend, I'm, I'm probably not gonna jump on anybody. Um, uh, who the hell is this guy? Um, hmm. Okay, so KBO, what the fuck was he doing when he... Um, huh. This guy's never pitched a big league inning. He wants nine million. Uh, um... I dropped it to five. Eight and a half. Seven point five over four. Final offer. If he if he asks for anything more than that, I am not bringing him in. This guy has really good stuff, and he's only twenty four years old. Which feels really weird because he's been pe pitching professionally since 2022, and I've literally never heard of this guy. But <laughs> fuck it, we'll, we'll give him seven and a half and see. If he... <laughs> um, Japanese reliever. Yeah, not a particularly great class. And also, I don't have a ton of money. Like, if I didn't already have a shortstop and the and the, the money that I have tied up in said shortstop, I don't think I would. I don't think I would have. 
I'd, I'd fucking jump on Kim, but... With, with the amount of insane fucking spending we're gonna see in this offseason, from all these, like... Okay, sorry, sorry, I just... I just blanked for like 30 seconds. Um, but yeah, back back to Kim. Um, I don't know. He's... He looks quite good. It, it's just... There's going to be a lot of insane spending this offseason from all these teams that have had massive budget increases due to their new fucking guys. I don't really think we're going to be too competitive in the free agent market this year. A lot of these guys are probably going to get massive fucking overpayments, particularly Robert and Kim and a lot of these guys. I can imagine Scruble getting like four, $35, 40000000 million in this class. So, we'll, 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 we'll see. Um, really, the only person I'm overly interested in is uh, Simara, or wh whatever the fuck. The, the guy who apparently pitched in the KBO, even though the KBO doesn't fucking exist in this world. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's quickly skip to, skip to tomorrow, to the 30th, and we will, um, we'll, we'll see what happens in the expansion draft. Okay, on to the 2028 MLB expansion draft. For the first time since 1998, 40 years ago, or 30 years ago, I'm not sure, with the, 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 the <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't talk. But Major League Baseball will be expanding. Who the hell? Okay, this guy's highlighted, which means he was part of my team at one point. Oh, he was one of the guys I traded for Yamamoto. Yeah, the, these guys all fucking suck. <laughs> Anderson was like the one piece that, that was actually playing for the fucking Dodgers. And it looks like they're about to pull the plug. <laughs> He, like, statistics, like, if you look at his ratings, he should actually be fairly decent. And Trey Turner is a first baseman on the Phillies now. Like, he was always on the Phillies, but the fact that he's a first baseman really shows that that contract's probably not, probably not going too well. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, yeah, these last few seasons have been kind of rough. Like, he had a fantastic 2024, but shit's just been getting worse and worse. He he, he can't play shortstop anymore. <laughs> they don't want him to play second anymore. He can't play like the outfield. He's just, he's, he's, he's cooked. Still hitting slightly above league average, though. That's not good enough for first base. So, who will Nashville Sound take with their first pick in the draft? Um, reliever... Jacob Webb, um, from Boston. Uh, yeah, sure, guys. <laughs> That's definitely who I'd take. With <laughs> like, he he could be a pretty good reliever, but I'm not taking a reliever with my first pick. <laughs> the Beavers also take a reliever. Um, that this guy could maybe be a starter. Like, he started 23 games last year. Though he's definitely more set up to be a reliever. Like, fuck. <laughs> oh, if he, had, if, he had, if he had control, this guy would be an elite fucking starting pitcher, so maybe? Okay, who's Portland take with their second round pick? Starlin Carva. Starlin Carva. Yeah, this guy, could be, this guy could be really good. Um... Didn't really get to play much for the Phillies. He played 55 games last year. Uh, how is his defense? Really good defense, actually. 44.7 ZR in 55 games. 7 ZR in 45 games in AAA. Uh, 22 years old. Re elite defensive shortstop with a promising bat. Honest to God, not a fucking terrible pick for, for the Portland Beavers. I'm not going to go pick by pick for the entire thing, but for the first, like, five or six rounds, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep this up. Nashville takes center fielder Dylan Head. 
Again, another really like this guy. This guy is a true center fielder, seventy range. Um, the bat's actually a little bit better in certain aspects than the other guy. Twenty-four years old. Um, played one hundred and twenty-two games in twenty twenty-seven for, for the Phillies. Slightly below league average bat, but really good defense. I'm assuming. Solid defense in center. Um, in, in all three outfield positions. I don't know. Probably a fairly solid building block. Definitely going to get playing time where he wasn't in. Um, where he wasn't in Philly. I'm going to take Joey Cantillo, who is actually a true starter this time. Struggles with control, but everything else is fairly decent from Texas. Oh my god, he's actually Hawaiian born. Okay, who does who do, who does Christian Santana from your Detroit Tigers? I didn't protect him because I was because I was like Jesus Christ, he had a 47 OPS plus. But <laughs> I guess we're going to be looking for a new backup infielder. Um he he's a good they, they've got a good one. I think He'll figure it out, maybe. Like, he has a fantastic eye and power tool, but everything else is kind of not good. <laughs> he's also a good... He's a plus defender. And they also take Junior... Junior Severino, who's... I don't know, like a slightly below league average first baseman. Asheville takes Eric Lua... Not really a shortstop, but uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll probably play him at first. And Lawrence Butler, who is an actual first baseman who can do nothing but play first and maybe shitty left field. What about the Beavers? What do they do here in round five? Round six, they take Lou, Louis Villard. And he's just a reliever. Borderline starter, though, uh, from Texas. I don't know. Maybe may a piece for their rotation going forward. And Tyler Brennan. Brennan? 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 I don't know. Another borderline starter, but this guy's actually quite good. I, that, that's somebody I'd have in my rotation. Nashville takes Michael. Wow, that guy is definitely a reliever, but fuck, maybe... <laughs> Pretty damn good one. That, that, that screams elite stopper to me. And Xavier Isaac, who's just a power threat, nothing else. Okay. Uh, Beavers, Will Warren. Not exactly a particularly good player. There are better players on the board. And Cade Fisher. Fisher is, again, that, that's an actual starter. Um, though the game tends to like him more as a reliever, but uh, he could definitely start games for them. Josh Hardy. Yeah, that's a starter. Though he has an, he has an elbow injury. And... I don't know. <laughs> and Jacob Moraz Morawski. Alex Plaza. Yeah, pretty that that's actually a pretty good like hitting catcher. I'm not sure if he's I'm not sure if the I'm not sure if this is an actual defensive catcher. Decent framing though, so you know he could he could be something. A lot of the players in this dra in this expansion draft have been like younger players. And the Nashville Sound take Dustin May in the eleventh round. Um, I, I think. Did I have this guy, or was that a different save? That was my Rocky save. Um, yeah, I don't know. De decent, de de uh, uh, somewhat entertaining expansion draft. We'll we'll complete the rest of it though. Uh, 
Lance McCullers, some some like older major leaguers. Matt McLean, I recognize that name. Reese Olson. Oh, they took Reese Olson off of us. Yeah, I wasn't planning on. I I I didn't actually care if they took him. Peyton Stonewall. And the final round. Was that all we lost in there? Where, where is it? Where? Transaction his, history. Um, Fergus. No, wait. The Ferguson left in free agency. Yeah, it was just Santana and Olsen we lost. Two guys who I, I, I like. I like both of these players individually, but they were not really ever going to be major pieces. Like, Olsen was a solid long reliever slash swing man for a few years, but I fucking... He, he was never as good at, at, at putting out results as Phillips, so... Phillips won the war. Okay, so we sit here. I think the date, uh, New Year's Eve, 2028, um, and we have some fairly important news. One, AJ Smith Shalver finally accepted his contract. Nine years, though in reality it's just seven. Um, very, very affordable. Um, Honestly, it's probably only like $30 million. Surprised he went for it, but if he's anything like he has been these first two seasons where he's been 55% above average in, in run prevention out of the pen as a stopper, that contract will be more than fucking worth it. Um, Matt Smith, I think I already mentioned, signed his extension. But more interesting news. So we lost um, both... We lost both Luis Robert Jr. or Robert Jr. and we also lost um, Torkelson. Now I don't I don't have the money and I really don't have any the, the players on the farm to replace him. Like at the like we have a couple fringe guys, um, Peyton Toil and uh, Mitch Voigt. Neither of which I'm all too high on. So I went out and I signed two guys. Jack Sawinski is to a $6.5 million per year. Next year he also has a team option. He, he was proficient in all three outfield spots. And is, I'm assuming a very good outfielder. The game thinks he's a 75 fucking range set left fielder. So, you know, fuck it. Um... In terms of ratings, very good righty masher, very good eye, very good power, got power. The contact's not great, but it's serviceable. And against lefties, Bobby, I, I signed Bobby Dahlback to play DH. Um, we're going to have Carter play right field against lefties. He's a very, very, he's a lefty masher. He, he should, he's on this team to do one thing and one thing alone, and that's hit home runs against lefties. Um, he's going to strike out a lot, but I'm not too worried. Um, if he flames out, Henry Malloy is competent against left-handed pitching. So he could very easily slot in and, and be our left-handed outfield and play the outfield against lefties. I'm pretty sure he's a better let right fielder than Carter. Uh, let me see. Evan Carter. Eh, Carter's a competent right fielder. Really, it, it doesn't matter who I have out there. Uh, we also signed the... Uh, the Colombian? But he pitched in the KB... Whatever. The, he, his name is... I, I have no fucking clue, man. But we have this guy... Um, should be very good. Four years, seven and a half million. Um, screams... 
probably more of a back end of the bullpen type stopper, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, we also have a few other guys. Uh, th th this guy has just very good stuff. <laughs> Um, actually, neither of them are going to be stoppers. Our only stop, the, the only two stoppers we're going to have next year are going to be Burns and Shelver. But these guys are going to be very good in bridging the gap to Burns and Shelver, as well as the rest of the bullpen. Um, I'm not, I, I don't have too many more plans for the rest of the off season. Um, so I, I'll probably, um. I might make a few more moves, but we'll, we'll see. Um, particularly around Jackson Job, I I'm not going to deal him this year. I, I might just let him walk. But what would he even want for an extension? Yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> would, would would he take twenty five? <laughs> Uh, through... Would he take that? No, he wants just an unreasonable amount of money. We might trade him. We, we might keep him. I'm not too too sure about Job. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We will see. What if I just give him a one-year fucking deal at, like, 25 million? Will he take that? Six million. <laughs> this is this is something that, I, yeah, he he he's already. I'm not gonna talk about this until next off season. Yeah, we'll we'll worry about this. We fine. We'll we'll kick the can down the road. Um, barring any like insane moves, we'll see you in spring training. Though I I think I may have another move or two up my sleeve. Okay, Let's welcome see. to opening day. And the preseason predictions predict us to be the first wild card as the New York Yankees are expected to win 102 games and comfortably win the the, the, the new Metro division by a fairly comfortable margin. Um, in the AL in the AL in the Southern Division, the Braves are expected to stomp the division. The Nashville Sound are weirdly expected to not be last so that's kind of cool uh, our players are all expected to be quite good this year um not our hitters though our hitters are kind of disrespected well green's expected to be really good um in the national league the rockies are once again expected to just fucking kill everybody cardinals are expected to be pretty fucking good um the dodgers are expected to roll over the division because they signed all of the good players uh, the West and uh, the Portland Beavers are expected to do better than the Diamondbacks. Uh, they have a decent team, so it wouldn't surprise me. Also, since when the fuck was Paul Skeens <laughs> the Chicago White Sox? I, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if the, if the White Sox were at least a second-place team this year. Um... Nothing really changed during spring training. Like, we can go over the, uh... Ah, uh, what is it? Where's the fucking thing? Yeah, we can go over these. Malloy's uh, contact went up drastically, and his potential. Uh, no improvement for Burns. Sullivan got a little bit of a gap power improvement. Matt Scott's control improved, but it actually didn't. <laughs> Parker Meadows, no improvement. Uh, Connor Bennett got a little bit more Babbitt, which is good. Uh, yeah, he actually did. Um... And Shelver and all these guys didn't really do anything. Um, I don't know why I did this, but I fucking sent him a minor league contract offer. Ty Madden, he was a former member of the organization, who I decided to, to get, give him a, another shot on, on, on the farm team. Uh, the only two successful, imp we had three successful improvements on the defensive side. Uh, Enrique Jimenez, this year's backup catcher's defense improved slightly. Um, Henry Malloy got some defensive improvements. 
as he's really going to just be the main backup outfielder this year. And Evan Carter got some defensive improvements. So, yeah. We Okay, we're, I am still going to stick with Sawinski over him, though. Um, th this team is promising. I, I still have to have actually make the roster cuts. But it, I don't think it's nearly as good as last year's team. Um, that being said, we, we, we haven't gotten that much worse. Uh, the preseason predictions still expect us to win about 97 games and only get beaten because the Yankees are just that fucking good. And once we and if we can manage to make the playoffs, it's a crapshoot from there. Um, but before this season, I don't think I've actually showed off this screen yet. I'd like to check to show off the decision history. Um, our best trades, our worst trades, and still to this day, our best trade was trading for Yoshinobu Yamamoto. As you can see, his thing it's given us 17, uh, 17 war. Uh, the the next two are are the signings of our middle infielders with 16 and 11 war respectively. Trading for Michael King and Connor Phillips was good. Robert, after a single season, gave us seven, six war. Scott's been our top draft pick. Jarvis Wells, who is now in Texas, and uh, Smith Shalver have also been fairly good acquisitions. Tarek Scruble is supposedly our our, our biggest loss. But I don't really think so, because he's been fucking awful. Jung, again, I, this is a guy I, I don't really think has been that big of a loss. Ch 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 I, I, again, I'm not a guy I don't really think was that big of a loss. Clark is a guy I think might end up being a really big loss for this team. And then there's just some other guys who are like, yeah, maybe. Javi Baez is considered one, even though... That was a net positive, not having his contract on the team. Uh, the, our second best trade, which is one that we might end up regretting in the future, but as of now is still considered a positive. Michael King for Clark and Rose. Rose is going to be an absolute fucking stud, and Clark is already starting to become a stud. Dingler for Robert. I... Like, they have plenty of time for these guys to fucking further improve. We've already gotten all the war out of this we're going to get. I, I, I'm, I don't regret this trade one bit because we won the World Series. Same with the King trade, but these ones might end up getting kind of ugly in the future. Shelby Miller for Bryce Jarvis, 3.9 war. That was a good trade. And Andy Abanez for Austin Wells was another good trade. Uh... And it's for, and it's gotten even better because of, because it led to um, Evan Carter. And our worst trades: Jace Jung for a, a bunch of guys who didn't turn into anything. Yeah, I, this was not a good trade. Tarek Scruble for. I still stand by that this was a good trade. Uh, Connor Phillips is really good. He he's made the roster this year, so so he has a chance to add some more. And Richard Cabrera eventually got flipped for Anthony Santander, and we got some cash in a fourth round pick. I stand by this trade. I still think that this was a fantastic trade. And Phillips is much better than fucking Scruble. Fuck you, game. Fight me. Miguel Diaz for for some money and a fucking. And a, and a draft pick, yeah, I, I don't regret it. Uh, David Ben, this was just an outright disaster of a trade. Luckily for us, it really didn't backfire on us that badly, but that Bendar deal was not good. And again, this is another trade that I kind of debate is bad. We got some cash, a draft pick, and and one of the best relievers in the game for a guy who really didn't have a roster spot after his first year here. So... Again, you, you can say having a middle-of-the-line starter is better than Shalver, and maybe it's true, but I defend that trade. So we have a few trades that are... Honestly, I'm more happy with the worst trades by war than I am with the best trades by war, because two of these trades will probably end up biting me in the ass in the future. Um... 
We're gonna we're gonna quickly do opening day, and then I'm gonna end this because it's like th nearly three in the morning. <laughs> okay, opening day 2029. Michael King versus Cole Rangans. I think their starter is. Let's see. Uh, if the, let's see if the Reds get anything going in the first. They do. King bears down and gets the first out of the inning. Three two. Look. Ellie De La Cruz will knock in the first run of the season for the Reds. Yes, he does. Okay. Okay, runner on second, La Cruz. Carnacion Strand, grounded Torres, eating over. Okay. Do your Tigers get anything going in the first? Green and Torres are on for Carter. Let's see. Lined into center. Caught. Throwing in. one nothing. Okay, Adele on second. Vance Honeycutt up for the Reds. And he goes down looking. Now... Honeycutt's a pretty bad hitter, but I'm pretty sure he's, like, one of the best center fielders in this game. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, he fucking is. <laughs> okay, Tanaka on second. Here's Parker Meadows. In, poked into center, but nothing going. And we're tied after two. King gets a good inning there. Rangan's a good inning. Strand on second with one out. Hit into center. It's two. No, it's two to one. Cincinnati here in the third or fourth. Sorry. Again, I am fucking exhausted. Okay, nothing going there. Okay, two on for Dahlbeck, Carter, and Tanaka. Dahlbeck swings and crushes one, and you can kiss it goodbye. It is gone, and the Tigers have taken a 4-2 lead here in the fourth. Hell yeah. Making a statement here on opening day. And Meadows with a two-out double. And Bennett strikes out. <sighs> Come on, dude. You've been given the fucking catcher's job. Run with it, buddy. Okay, two on for Torres. One, two. And he goes down. Come on, Evan Carter. And he walks. The bases are now loaded. Tanaka, and he goes down swinging, giving Bobby Dahlbeck has another chance to do damage, and he strikes out, but the but it gets away, and a run will score. It is now 5-2. Bases loaded for William Sullivan, who grounds out to the first baseman to end the inning. Wonderful. Truly. Okay. I have no idea how that happens. And it gets by him. <laughs> okay, we're turning to the pen. After a... Somehow that was only a double. I, 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 I don't even know. Okay, who, 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 who's hot in the pen? Uh, we'll give this guy his MLB debut. Yorkie Samarma. Samara. Strikes him out. First big league strikeout for, for the longtime minor leaguer at this point. And Meadows, two down here in the sixth. Full count Joe Adele. Goes down swinging. Great first appearance for our boy here. 
Um, we'll go one more inning. Uh, we'll bring in Polino for his big league debut. Clean inning for him there. Shalver. Hey, on, buddy. What are you going to do with your fucking big new extension? I say it's a big new extension. It's, like, really fucking cheap. That gets away. Bennett. Runners on second and third. And he goes down swinging. About Riley Green. He also... He goes down looking. Okay. What does Shalver give us? Clean ninth. Well, he gave up a hit, but... Th th this is what we need from our bullpen this year. <laughs> Five innings from King, he was kind of eh. But the bullpen absolutely shut him down. And Dahlbeck with a home run. And it, 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 off to another strong start for the Tigers. <sighs> this took me like two hours to record. But you know what? Uh, it was it was fun. <laughs> um... But yes, we're uh, we're back, and uh, even though we 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 lost some big pieces this off season, we we don't rebuild. And also, I I need to fix that because I I forgot to do that. <laughs> but we we don't rebuild in Detroit. We only retool. Um, for even even when we lose some big pieces, we'll we're we're, we're we'll continue to be okay. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching, and goodbye.